All right, I want to show you how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. There are other ways to solve quadratic equations, but this video is only going to show you solving quadratic equations by factoring. And I'm going to do that very quickly, but first let me start off with a really simple concept. Um, for this first equation here, do you see that I'm multiplying 5 times some number, which I don't know what it is, is equal to 0, and I'm getting a product of 0. So if I ask you what is that missing number, then I hope it's easy to see. It's got to be 0. The only way 5 times something is going to be 0 is if that missing number is a 0. Or if I did uh, something, some number times negative 3 is equal to 0, then I'm pretty sure you can figure that out and say, well, that missing number has to be 0. What if I did something like this, though? What if I said I've got two numbers, I'm not telling you what either one is, and their product is 0, you can, you can probably safely assume that either this first number has to be a 0, or that second number has to be a 0, or maybe both of them are a 0. Now I'm mentioning that to you because what we're going to do when we solve quadratic equations by factoring is we're going to, well, we're going to end up with something like this at some point. For example, we're going to have in one parentheses x plus 5, and then in the other parentheses x minus 2, right? And what makes this an equation here is that we have an equal sign in it. You've probably learned factoring by now, but now these are equations because I've got that equal sign in it right there. And look, I still have two parentheses being multiplied together, giving me 0. So logically, as I showed you a moment ago, either this first parentheses here has to be 0. The contents of that parentheses must be 0. Or maybe this one over here is equal to 0. Or maybe they're both equal to 0. So I'm just going to draw a little line in between here to separate them out. And I want you to think back for a moment to the days when you learned solving equations. And if you wanted to get x by itself in this first equation right here, you would subtract 5 from both sides. These 5's would cancel, turn into a 0, and we're left with x is equal to negative 5. There's one answer that we're going to get out of this quadratic equation. And I'm going to tell you in just a little while uh, what does it mean that for it to be quadratic? But to finish off this other equation over here, I would add 2 to both sides, and these guys would cancel, and we're left with x is equal to a positive 2. So it turns out that these two parentheses yield us two answers, and do you notice a shortcut that we might be able to use to go from x plus 5 and x minus 2 into answers of x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 2. Yeah, you can probably see that pretty easily that really we're just changing the signs, right? We're just changing the signs of that positive 5 into a negative 5 and that negative 2 into a positive 2. So keep that in mind. Let me show you one other shortcut that you can use. Let me slide this down so you can see it better. Uh, let's say that we had something like this. What if one parentheses had a 2m minus 7, and the other one had a, I don't know, how about a 4m plus 1, something like that. Okay, well, we're going to use the shortcut in just a second. I'm going to show you how we're going to get the shortcut like we did in the first two for, for these next two parentheses. But again, the math behind this, right, the math behind this, without using the shortcut, is that each of these parentheses must be set equal to 0. So we're going to set this parentheses, 2m minus 7 equal to 0. And we're going to set this parentheses equal to 0, 4m plus 1 equals 0. And we're going to solve each of these for m. Very quickly here, again, I'm not showing you how to solve equations but quadratic equations, so I'm just going to assume you know this simple uh, simple equation solving here of adding 7 to both sides. These guys are gone. I've got 2m is equal to 7. If I wanted to get m all by itself, I would divide both sides by 2, and I would get m is equal to 7 halves, or 7 over 2. Likewise, for this one, I would start by subtracting 1 on both sides. I've got 4m now is equal to a negative 1. And dividing both sides by 4, I would get m is equal to a negative 1 fourth. So do you see a shortcut that we can use to go from 
each of these original parentheses into my answers here. Do you see that I did change that negative 7 into a positive 7? Just like we changed that positive 5 into a negative 5, we're going to change the sign of this last term. But if we have a coefficient in front of the variable here, we're going to stick that coefficient on the bottom. It turns into the bottom of a fraction. So likewise, change that negative 1 into a into, uh, sorry, positive 1 into a negative 1. Divide both sides by 4. So that 4 gets moved down underneath the bottom. That's a shortcut answer of just solving these uh, parentheses here um, for whatever variable it is, m or x or p or whatever it might be. Now, why am I showing you all that? Here's why. What we're going to end up with, what we're going to do to solve our quadratic equations is we're going to start with something really simple. Let's go with something like this. How about y squared plus 3y plus 2 equals 0. Now let me just pause for a quick second and show you what I'm doing here. First off, is this an equation? Yes, it is. Look, it's got an equal sign. So that's what makes this thing an equation. Well, what makes it a quadratic equation? When you hear that prefix quad, I tend to think of the number 4. Well, not quite. In math, quadratic means that the largest exponent, right? this quadratic here, means that the largest exponent is actually a 2. Right? If the largest exponent in your equation is a 2, then it's a quadratic equation. Which means we can take the left-hand side and we can factor this down. I showed in a separate video that you can look at just this trinomial here and tell what the two signs are going to be inside the parentheses. If this is a plus sign, I know they're both going to be the same. And since that's a plus sign, I know they're both going to be plus. And let's see, I'm going to get a y times y at the beginning of these parentheses to get me to y squared. And the only way to split up 2 as factors is just 2 and 1. Now, using that shortcut I just showed you, you can come up with the two answers very easily from this. And that is y is equal to a negative 1 and y is equal to a negative 2. And if you're using something like my math lab, then you have to enter in both of those answers separated by a comma. Doesn't really matter which number comes first. And you can enter in something like that on my math lab. Negative 1 and negative 2 using the shortcut to help you out. That's solving quadratic equations.